I hope the, uh, the lecture will live up to the expectations and the, uh, the fantastic words that Samir came up with. Uh, we'll do this in English or Arabic, okay? And Stagal Nosonos, okay? And Shufi Lila Hatim Shizaya, Tamim Hanzo, the Kadamara, Tamim. Okay. Zay Mesamir Tafadal, and I'm a Lutu Master, Kahara. Talimi Assessi, Gamet Achems, Kulit Lamara, Kosma Lamara. في مصر مقدمة كده سريعة عشان الخلفية الأكاديمية برضو بتفرق في مدارس معروفة بأنها متأثرة بالوزار عن شمس أساسها أولها وجامعة القاهرة متأثرة بال مور الباو هاوس المارنيزم في الفترة اللي احنا كنا لسه بنبدأ فيها المرحلة التعليمية طبعا احنا جيل كان قبلنا في في مصر وفي العالم العربي عامة جيل عمالقة في فترة وبعدين حصل نوع من الركود إلى حد ما وبعدين بدأ نوع من الدم الجديد في الأكاديميك إدكيشن بعد كده رحت على الستيت ورحلة طويلة بقى مع الأكاديميك أمريكان سيستم which is a very different system mainly طبعا إحنا عشان إحنا في أكاديميك إنستيتيوشن ف my lecture will focus on the process and the way of thinking more than a final product. Samir can be a bit For me, the state of becoming or the process of making architecture remains live and alive in the final product, if you will. In the end of the process, the process has to be present حي وواضح في المنتج الأخير اللي هو architecture is is fighting not to be frozen in time which is a very you know difficult aspiration to achieve but it's the attempt to do so because we're still fighting with the materiality that we are that we have available we're still fighting that we uh, we have to build in between brackets بين قوسين in stone and concrete and steel and I, I think also we are at a moment in history that we are going into a field or an area where we can start to build, even the materiality will change, that we can build in materials physically can transform in real time, which is really would be a turning point in the history of mankind, I think, in general. But we're not there yet. Um, can, can we have the lights down? Okay, um, syntags and paradigms. In, in the process, uh, it may become clear in uh, man al asl syntax, but just to uh, to give you an idea, uh, syntags in general. It's a Latin word that's also French and it's also English, but it means a, a group of philosophical concepts. Paradigms is a different expression, which means a group of scientific concepts together. So, so the purpose of the lecture is to place architecture within this schizophrenic world. Is architecture, does architecture belong in the world of philosophy? Is it a philosophical proposition at its roots? Mil a concept, fikra, tabda bifikra falsafeya, or is it a scientific proposition? Ultimately, it will have to go and abide by the rules of science and physics, and mathematics, and geometry that are absolutely logical and do not <coughs> cannot deviate from those fundamental laws of the universe, if you will. It's a big question. Of course, of course we will never be able to answer that question uh, in, a, in an absolute uh, way. forever a relative answer. It's impossible to answer such a question. Is it really paradigmatic or is it really uh, syntagmatic? It's, uh, in the question itself carries within it a question that knows it cannot be answered. Nevertheless, architects, we have to keep the search and to continue to defy those notions because we are born to be schizophrenic. 
in a very positive way. And we have to remain because this is just the nature of our profession. Um, one of my, my great inspirations in, in my life in general, especially after I moved to the United States and started really searching in a different direction from the roots of my education uh, in Egypt, <coughs> are philosophers and scientists really, not architects. Obviously, you grow up, you admire certain architects, you like their work, you look at them and you, you see the competitions and you're so inspired. But searching for answers for what you're really trying to be and, and, and uh, your work to take uh, an experimental direction, I found myself attracted to philosophers. And specifically, the French school of philosophy, the contemporary modern Deleuze, Foucault, <coughs> and so on. Deleuze, in particular, who's, uh, who said these words, uh, <clears throat> Deleuze and Guattari together were very instrumental in the academic world in America, actually, in general. It's not just my own fascination, but Deleuze is a fundamental philosopher that all architecture students and professors have to really swim in his world. It's almost a must. You cannot go through uh, proper architecture education without intersecting with some of Deleuze's ideas. I like this image because it has within it <coughs> a kind of uh, uh, contradictions paradoxes American bombs on Baghdad. And it's, it's really science when it's at its best, and science is at its worst. The force of destruction uh, is destroying one of the greatest cities on, in, on earth by the same scientific advances, scientific knowledge that we accumulate to build cities. We use them by the same political will or lack of to destroy the same cities. <clears throat> and a similar image, which is blurry, but of a different city. The city that those bombs may have initiated at, but that's many years later, which is New York City. Again, another force of destruction struck on New York City. Again, a shot taken by a satellite image from uh, a rotating satellite around the United States, uh, around the Earth, actually. This is the World Trade Center, obviously, in New York City at the time of the bombs, uh, the planes hitting. So uh, <coughs> this image, I think, if I would not have told you, I would have told you that the smoke or the smoke that many thousands or thousands of people are getting killed, you may look at it and say, well, what a beautiful picture, maybe. Somebody may. Somebody may say, oh, it's nice, but it's not. Whatever. But it has a certain sense of attraction to it without knowing the, the meaning behind what you're looking at. Same thing to New York City and so on. So the paradoxes, another image, one of my favorites of the globe but from a higher distance of the Beirut, this whole thing and this big thing that we call Egypt. Uh, <laughs> And it's, it's, it's another image that also you may look at it with two different perspectives. One would say, wow, great, the surah, the nur, the idaa, the civilization, the alam, shufi akhila. Somebody says, you should look at the waste of consumption and waste of energy. And you can look at it with this other philosophical slant and you would take, would use the exact same image to produce an advertising campaign to say this is not what we should do today as an environmentally conscious civilization. Because this is literally <coughs> too much light for what should be just green and agriculture. This is the Nile Valley. It shouldn't have that much energy coming out of it based on artificial uh, use of, uh, of uh, petrol. Same thing. Obviously, you probably can, we can find Beirut here, somewhere here, in this. Uh, and sometimes, actually, the metropolis connect to the point they become one continuous string of light. You cannot even tell one from the other. Obviously, some of them become so inflated that become so <clears throat> one big glow of light, like this one. This is Cairo, obviously. 
Another philosopher who actually was at the turn of the century is very essential and very important and actually defined to me personally a certain a moment when I hit and intersected with his thoughts. I, I began to understand really this notion of becoming that I had it and he crystallized it and made it so clear to me that this is really the meaning of becoming. And that's Henri Bergson, for one of his greatest writings in Creative Evolution. <coughs> becoming, and I'm not going to go through the explanation of those philosophers in this particular setting. And we're here, and we're talking about the idea of architecture, in particular, and the influence of philosophy, and science, and science. But in general, you will get the sense of what I mean, or what it means to be becoming within the notion of syntagms and paradigms as we progress. So I won't really go through explaining every single uh, quotation, but it will help you <coughs> understand where all this come from. The, the lecture will uh, pass through like a trajectory of, it may not be your typical architectural lecture, Mohandas Mamari, Biegi, Hottish Watsoar, Wazil Mabani, Shwai Chogli Max, Alabanda Max, Kalam Gamil, Wadal Plani Abish Mohandas, Almost, almost, we will just hint at this at the end. It's really about how it all comes to life, how it becomes architecture, where it comes from. In, in, in our work, and I think also a major trajectory that affected the way architectural amara assess and tahawalit min khilal meet sana fil qarn al 20, l gait al lahza al ihna fiya fil qarn al 21. Architects are, are, are searching what you think is a language, formal language, but really it shouldn't be looked at as a formal language. It's a search about a philosophical way of producing architecture than a formal play with uh, morphology and so on. Uh, Jacques Lacan, of course, <coughs> is another important uh, uh, thinker, philosopher, who also touched upon the notion of uh, uh, the becoming. He says, what is realized in my history is not the past definite of what was, since it's not more or even the present perfect of what has been and what I am, but the future anterior to what shall I have been for what I am in the process of becoming. Obviously, this is a very convoluted English sentence, long sentence. It's trying to explain that the future actually becomes of something that comes from the deep past projected onto the future because everything is in the state of becoming. You don't have to kill yourself understanding what it says, but it's the gist of it really what matters as a gesture, as a conceptual notion that's very important. Uh, <clears throat> again, the intersection between architecture and philosophy uh, Elizabeth Groth is a contemporary writer, architectural writer, also wrote a very important book that I think all of you should really uh, search and read, Architecture from the Outside. Also talks about a new notion that became, that when they were discussing the notion of becoming, devenir, in the beginning of the century, they only had cinema as the only parallel universe that they can refer to. And I'll show you how and how they were affected, the philosophers and the scientists and the architects and the artists, which I'm very actually surprised that uh, Samir picked up on Marcel Duchamp because I, I think, as I will show you, Marcel Duchamp is probably the most fundamental, most single-handedly important artist in the 20th century, not because of his beautiful paintings as much as his ideas in his paintings. Again, <coughs> Elizabeth Groth talks about virtuality, which is an evolution of the notion of cinema, the ephemeral world of cinema. And now we live in another proposition of <coughs> the virtual world. Again, relating it to the notion of becoming. Gilles Deleuze, again, with his friend Felix Guattari. <coughs> they're, they're talking also about how philosophy comes from a different plane of eminence as opposed to science as coming from a plane of reference. Science references certain facts and propositions that are <coughs> references in physics, in mathematics, in geometry, in cosmology, and so on. 
Philosophy is a plane of eminence, a different proposition. Philosophy does not have any fixed facts, as a matter of fact. Philosophy is created to be simultaneously uncreated and recreated by someone else. So <clears throat> science is an accumulative set of propositions and ideas and concepts that Newton arrives at a fantastic theory. You build upon it, you take it apart, you build upon it, and you evolve from it. Philosophy is a completely different way of evolution. It's what Deleuze calls the plane of eminence, which is different from plane of reference. <clears throat> okay, here he says again, he's trying to explain the plane of eminence is neither a concept nor the concept of all concepts. Like, not one single philosophical proposition would actually include everything. Like, even science now is trying to propose the theory of everything. Science can actually aspire to say, now we have arrived at this point in the history of mankind to, I don't know if you've heard about this theory, Nazarit, كل شيء يعني النظرية اللي فيها كل شيء اللي بيشرح الكوزمولوجي لغاية الكوانتم فيزيكس in one complete theory. You must have heard of this possibility, okay? In philosophy, this is impossible. Or as actually Leibniz would call it, the incompossibilities. I don't know if you heard that term. That's very difficult to translate, but I will try to I'll attempt to really explain what it is because it's very also fundamental to the notion of becoming. I won't bore you too much with this, but <clears throat> others in a different political slant to the evolution of philosophy in our times, someone very important that also is a, is a very important th uh, thinker in our time, Paul Virilio, again French, again the French school of philosophy is still fundamentally the most critical and most important until today, interestingly enough. Uh, he was referring to what Francis Fukuyama said in his book, The End of History, referring to history has ended because liberal democracy of the Western world have won every argument, philosophical argument, and it's the end of history. And uh, <clears throat> beginning of space, and he referred back to him and says, it, what has ended really is geography. That is really the correct way of describing our world, is the end of geography and the boundaries and the way we look at our world from the spatial concept. When you say the end of geography is a spatial concept referring to place and boundaries, and the end of history is a temporal referring to time and historical accumulations, which are two different <coughs> Well, Again, Bergson is referring to the perpetual state of becoming. Okay, this, this is just a very quick, fast way of taking you into the world of philosophy that have affected this notion of becoming that's very influential in this process of architectural design. And, and we go back now to how the tools that the architects have used, whether scientific tools or mathematicals or geometry, because we are the ultimate, again, this is a famous painting, uh, <coughs> old painting, which is referred to a saying that says, God is the ultimate geometer meaning that the entire order of the universe is really a geometric exercise. And in this Bacon's famous painting, God is the ultimate geometer, or the ultimate architect. And so it's a very scientific, measurable process. Geometry. This is what we do as architects. You cannot do anything without understanding geometry or use geometry. You use geometry without even knowing that you're using geometry. If you have not, and this is also a problem with this generation, maybe, that the computer has become a tool that allows you to use geometry without understanding the logic of geometry. You just, it does it automatically for you, which is really a big problem. I think it's a big, it's a sad state because if the architect or who, anyone who is actually involved in the act of making space does not, he or she, literally understand the logic of the making of the space and its geometric logic, I don't think you really can handle totally. Geometry is the ultimate tool. Geometry is the ultimate tool. They had their own logic and way of arriving at certain equations. 
المعادله العرب عملوها بطريقه معينه تحت الحضاره العربيه في الصين كانوا بيوصلوا لنفس الكونكلوجنز بس في فيري كومبليتلي ديفرنت لوجيك تو ارايف ات ذا باثاغورس او نظريات فيثاغورس وتطويرها لفكر جديد طبعا ده مراحل القرون ال11 وال12 وال13 لغايه ال15 لغايه قبل الرينيسانس وشغالين في المود دوت كله ده جاي من حاجه اسمها يوكليديان جيومتري اكليدس اللي هو اشتغل شغله في اسكندريه طبعا هتلاقوا في الاخر ان في النهايه حاجات كتير جدا من اللي بنتكلم عليها دي بدات فلسفيا وهندسيا وعلميا في الحاره بتاعتنا دي الحاره اللي هي شرق البحر المتوسط العراق <تصفيق> ليفنت للخصيب مرورا بمصر تلاقي كل بدايات الفكر الفلسفي في العالم الغربي طبعا عشان ما نظلمش العالم الشرقي الشرق الاقصى طبعا كان عندهم قصه مختلفه الى حد ما بس وصلوا الى كونكلوجنز مشابهه لكن اليوكليديان جيومتري جت في لحظه لحظه مهمه في تاريخ الانسانيه حد قال اقليدس او يوكليديان جيومتري از بيست اون ا فيري فكره غير متكامله لانها بتفترض استواء جميع المسطحات لا تستطيع ان تشتغل جيومتري او هندسه بالفكر الاقليدس او يوكليديان الا ما يكون عندك مسطح منبسط بالكامل اول ما دخل في المعادله دي فكره جديده بتاعت الفورث دايمنشن اللي هي جايه اصلا من البعد الرابع اللي هي جايه من فكره اخرى ان في العالم اللي احنا بنشتغل عليه دوت احنا شايفينه في البعد الثالث فكره ناقشها كاتب انجليزي اسمه ادوين ابت ابت في في بدايه نهايه القرن ال19 بدايه القرن ال20 ان الفلات سماها فلات لاند فبيقول ان ان احنا عاملين زي الشخص ده شايفين كل حاجه في الاكس اند واي يعني الاكس اند واي انك مش متخيل ان في زي ما فيش زد ففي العالم الفلات لاند لو في شخص في الفلات لاند هيشوف كل حاجه اكس اند واي فمش متخيل او مش متخيله ان الـ ان الـ ان في اوبجكت موجود في في البعد الثالث فبالنسبه للشخص في البعد الثنائي دون شايف الشخص ده فقط من خلال تقاطع البلين اللي هو موجود فيه فشايف دايره هنا وتقاطع هنا وتقاطع هنا فقط they cannot conceive ان ده جزء من اوبجكت متكامل هو متقاطع مع الفراغ في البعد الثاني ده عشان يشرح الفكره ان احنا في البعد الثالث مش قادرين ندرك ان في بعد رابع فاحنا شايفين فقط بيتخيل لنا ان كل شيء هو الاكس والواي والزد لان احنا عاملين بالظبط زي الفلات لاندر اللي هو عايش في البعد الثاني لما اكتشفوا فكره البعد الرابع اللي هو ذا فاكتور اوف تايم which marries بقى بتتجوز فكره ذا بيكومينج تبدا العمليه بتاخد ساينتفيك انجل تبدا تتقاطع مع الفكره الفلسفيه اللي هي جايه من فكره ذا بيكومينج اللي هي ذا فورث دايمنشن اللي بدا بدايه من القرن 19 بقت اصبحت هاجس او فيري امبورتنت ديسكشن وطبعا الكوزمولوجي والورد سبيس القصه دي برضه هنناقشها بطريقه مختلفه ان 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 حتى كنت بتكلم مع مع سامر في مناقشه على عشاء فكره البلوب ان البلوب ده لما بتاخد انكابسوليتد بارت اوف سبيس از ا بابل ات ريلي از ا بيس اوف سبيس ذات سيبريتد ات سيلف فروم انذر كونتينيوم شيء مستمر اللي هو جاي من التوبولوجي بتاع العالم الاخر اللي هو شغال في البعد الرابع فاللحظه اذا اف يو انكابسوليت ا بيس ذات جريج لين وود كول ذا بلوب فور انستنس هير وي جو ستريت ام جامبينج فاست تو اركيتكشر از ريلي Uh, a, a misconception because that blob should have been separated from a continuous membrane that lives in the fourth dimension that's but you cannot conceive of it because you're actually like this guy so that blob is one of those intersections in the fourth dimension <laughs> is a sphere. Right. Of course. Of course. 
Comprehension. Uh, could, can I continue? There may be in the continuous of the lecture, maybe there will be an answer. Maybe not. I hope, yes. Okay. <clears throat> so they discussed geometrically, again, without boring you too much with those propositions, because they're very fundamental to really understand where we're at now. And when you see, the reason I'm going on with this particular part of the presentation is <clears throat> When you see architects today doing those acrobatics and fluid forms and, and, and you cannot even do them and see of them without those notions of different perception of topolo topological geometries. In, again, they exist in the fourth dimension. But there's two fundamental languages, <coughs> or two fundamental universes that exist within this one, the one that discusses geometry in the tectonics and another that discusses geometry في العالم التوبولوجي اللي هو continuous uh, uh, topological dimensions in, in, in our world this is the XYZ axis and this one refers to another proposition which I will discuss that uh, Samir uh, referred to which is the tetra vector that became also an, 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 uh, it came out of this discussion that influenced the way we build form in space based on the coordinates. Then the عالم اللي احنا عايشين فيه العالم الإقليدي الإقليديين متأثر فقط بالX Y والZ الكوردينتس التقليدية. لو هنشتغل على البعد اللي بيتحرك في الفكتور الرابع لازم ندور على سيستم تاني اللي يبدأ يدينا غير البلاتونيك سوليد اللي هو نسميه احنا بقى it's our own effort a tetra vector. The tetra vector allows us to engage with the topological language by inventing instead of one, two, three axes which are similar to the coordinates of X and Y and Z, you need a fourth axis that is imbued, زي ما بنقول, في كمون, كمون, dormant force, اللي ممكن تشتغل عليها ممكن تكون a force of, of, of uh, touch, force of, uh, of smell, force of time, force of, it vibrates with potentialities, بنسميها, الاحتماليات. فعلشان نشتغل على surfaces اللي هي السرفس نفسه بيتحول in space and time, in the fourth dimension, our topological, there has to be four axes, hence the tetra vectors. Tetra gaya min tetrahedron. اللي هو ده. اللي هو simultaneously عنده أربع أكسات في أربع اتجاهات متساوية في نفس الوقت. ده اللي سامر كان منوه ليه في بداية المحاضرة في التقديم. ف ف ف there is allows for a fourth axis that allows it to be loaded as an architect. If you're working with parametrics or whatever possibilities or issues, you can load this one with a potential either movement in time or it could be even the color of the surface can be shifted according to that state of mind in movement. I'll just pass this part of the geometry because it's, it's a little bit too much. I just wanted to <coughs> take you all these systems, actually go back to the, the fundamental platonic solids, go back to the cube and the tetrahedron. Everything has to go back to a cube and tetrahedron. These are the two ultimate fundamental units in the world of Euclid. Cube and a tetrahedron that exists within it. And this is trying to move the tetrahedron within the fourth dimension. I will. <coughs> Obviously, you must have studied all the platonic solids. And then the same platonic solids can exist on a spherical surface. Then, hence, you have the topological dimension that cannot follow the same rules of the tectonics. Just take it a little bit closer to something that is an application of that one in the geometries, the complexity of geometries in our part of the world, the Natagan, the Fikr al Tagridi fil Hadara al Arabiya. And how all of this came from this rigorous understanding of a very high level uh, uh, complex sense of, of geometry and understanding of geometry. And it goes on and on and on. Um, obviously this is just examples of multitudes. You must have studied some of them of complexities. What what actually uh, <coughs> what interests me is that all of these complex Arabic geometries 
actually all of them emanate from very simple, simple, simple rules of geometry. Is simply, as this is one example with a project that we work with, that if you have two squares and you connect the diagonal of the two squares, meaning a unit one to two, it's the exact same diagonal that shares the same principles with three squares rotated on the other dimension. This is just a simple thing. Two squares connected on the diagonal. The same two squares have the same diagonal of three squares but on the rotation. This principle, which is just literally connecting points between uh, unit one, one, two, one, three, can infinitely produce a very complex form. The principles in this is literally, nothing is added to this one beyond that one, except you keep subdividing, again, the three, you can connect the three on the diagonal, and you keep connecting one to two. All of this is based on the principle of one to two to one to three only. Imagine in the Arab Islamic architecture, they worked with one to two, one to three, one to four, one to five, one to 12 diagonals. Hence, you get infinite number of geometric extrapolations. But really, if you go back backward, as a geometric and you understand the basics of this one, it's a simple rule of two squares connected diagonally. So there is no magic to it when you, are, when you go back and un fundamentally understand. But all of this, again, lives in the world of tectonics on a plane, simple plane. <clears throat> and again, of course, they took it to infinite number of possibilities in the th third dimension and the stalactites, the muqarnasat, uh, and so on. And the movement from the plane to the three dimensional and so on. All of this is based on simple geometry. What really interests me also is how they began to apply those simple geometries between brackets, and that's al basita, the surface topological. And topological surfaces, I think there is a slide that was missing. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I don't know why it uh, jumped. It's, it's when you begin to apply the geometries on this dome, the rules no longer apply. They are not the same geometric rules you apply on a flat surface, absolutely. And there's the, the, the slide that I'm looking for is a, actually a quick explanation, because all of this exists in nature, obviously. I mean, af after that, you know, people search and where all the spatial geometries exist in, in this uh, soap bubbles and so on, in the fourth dimension. What, what was discovered later, <clears throat> that the Euclidean geometry and the general relativity by Einstein and the quantum uh, geometry, all of them needed, general relativity and quantum, needed this sense of topological geometry to begin to explain those <coughs> equations in the universe. They cannot work with the, the so, and, and we have Riemannian geometry who was the first person in history to really begin to explain those geometries. That's the slide that I'm looking for. It's a very interesting proposition you have to think about as an architect. All of us know that a triangle has 180 degrees. No less, no more, right? This is almost like a fixed rule, okay? Wrong. Once you apply, <laughs> once you apply this triangle on a surface that is not, the exception in the universe is exactly what our friend Mr. Hicks? Mr. X, Mr. Y, Mr. X, I'm Mr. Y today. He's Mr. X. It's the exception to the rule, the flatness, because if you apply that triangle on a surface that's spherical, concave, or convex, all the rules of Euclidean geometries are thrown out the window and they don't apply. The triangle, literally, that is on that surface <coughs> is no longer 180 degrees. In the convex, al muqar exactly. I'll get it back. 
على السطح الكروي if you have this intersection with this one is a 90 degrees right and the one next to it is also another 90 degrees when they intersect so where do we get the balance of this third one and if you keep opening this line opening opening until the 180 degrees will keep in it's always on that one it's 180 degrees plus infinitely and the other one is 180 degrees minus infinitely and they never ever have the exact number unless you happen to intersect in this flat world of flat Euclidean geometry so how did our friends in Damascus or Baghdad or Cairo or Rabat or wherever know about this how did they apply the rules of geometry on those topological surfaces all these domes that have or vaults that had those <coughs> flat non flat surfaces so they must have been aware of the fact without knowing the explanation behind those rules obviously today Ryman who actually discovered this notion of topological and that's what I was asking uh, you about that one before we entered Gabby yeah we had a discussion with Gabby is this geometry they could not write those equations until we had the computer today that we can actually draw spatially an equation in topological surfaces that is so complex that is only recently computer can simulate those uh, multiple equations that Ryman have conceived of in the 1800s okay so all of this explains the <clears throat> notion of folded space from flat to this complexity of the space which is really a language that you work with mo many of you some of you without probably understanding how the geometric logic that goes with it that actually affect <clears throat> everything you do so the, again I'm, I'm this is going really fast about the intersection between the syntax of philosophical propositions in time and space and paradigms that are based on scientific concepts of geometry and physics and cosmology and the universe in general how they really <coughs> affect the way we uh, conceive our world. In the world of physics the macro scale is cosmology obviously and in, in, in the theory of relativity and later other theories and in the micro scale in quantum physics in the micro micro and also there is the world of the theory of chaos which uh, Samir was referring to the notion of no chaos but that's another uh, discussion but in the theory of relativity we went from this world that the the earth is the center of the universe whether in the world of the Renaissance or in the Arab Islamic that we later discovered this is all bogus of course the earth is not the center and we have this today we cannot be the same architects who were living in the 13th century, 18th century, 19th century, early 20th century, and we don't have access to this. This is an image by the Hubble telescope witnessing <coughs> real-time image. It's affectionately known in NASA the, by the fingers of God. Why? Taman the scale betadol is billions and billions and billions and billions of light years. هنا في مجرات كاملة إما بتتولد يا إما imploding it's impossible to tell because by the time this image reached us it's already this has already been gone to another universe or so the proposition that is really weird is what if we are witnessing an image that is the universe that we live in now and by the time we got the image we are already in this universe which is the Milky Way. فهمت حاجة؟ لا مش لازم نكون مع ستار وورز و ذا ريال ساينس تمام؟ This is an image was taken from a Hubble into deep space. Taking image of مجرات galaxies being born. This is like huge scale. Those galaxies by the time this image reached us بتاخد وقت. That event must have imploded, exploded in space and time that could have been what we are in now, looking back at ourselves. Got it? Samir, Akit. Okay. Fish help. 
it. <laughs> okay. It's a proposition that if you look at the image that I showed in the beginning, Le Baghdad, New York City, satellite, the Eid on the Ard, the meter. حاجة كلام فارغ يعني ده قاعد يلف حوالينا كده من على بعض يعني ممكن بالليل تبص على ستلايت ده طبعا. This is the Hubble that went in deep space looking at something that's billions and billions. My point is, is not to discuss the theory behind this as much as this is a philosophical proposition. This is not really a scientific fact because what I'm proposing to you is a paradox. صح؟ جوزيف؟ أنا بحاول يعني استجدي المساعده من الجمهور. It's a paradox. That how could you conceive of yourself in a space that has become you and you are looking back at yourself? It's a very, it's a philosophical concept, but it's based on a scientific observation. This is where syntags and paradigms begin to blur and cannot really be separated. That's why the answer to that question is almost impossible. I mean, it's infinite number. I mean, again, we, we look at this universe now, our ancestors or even 50 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, we had no access to this. So my question to you, can you be the same architect? Can you be in the business of making space, having access to this? It's a question. It's a real question, really, true question. Oh, a rhetorical tamal, and if I'm answering it myself, I would say no, but someone could answer by, yes, I'm a man of the universe, and the world, 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 ما هو قشطة يعني زي ما بيقولوا في مصر دلوقتي تمام؟ اوكي. That cannot be because in the architectural discourse truly and believe me all of these architects that you look at their work doing their fancy stuff what you see is just the last glitch of the search of multiple possibilities that actually begin and all of them whether Again, uh, someone was referring, I don't know why I'm, I'm, I'm referring to Greg Lynn again. I think it was you referring to Joseph, Joseph referring to Greg. is <laughs> about those topologies. They come from this. They come from that world. They come from those scientific and philosophical propositions. We are not the same. We cannot be the same thinkers. Forget architects. Can we be the same thinkers, given the nature of our world today as we see it? As we can see, of course, one would say, one would say, "Al-Hakika fil Kun Mutlaka, and nothing changes." That's a proposition, right? And one would say, "Hatta min dakhil al-alb al-fikriya al-metaphysicalia, an al-khalq mutajadid." Hakiki, or no? Mafish had the same al, ah, صح? It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Sufi, mystical, in all traditions, whether it's St. John of the Cross, Lamael, and a St. John of the Cross, St. John of the Cross. Okay. Uh, it, 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 they're all discussed from a mystical, metaphysical point of view. The notion is the creation in the universe a fact that was done and it's fixed, or is it a continuum of becoming eternally? And that is the, the, the ultimate secret of the absolute, that the absolute is ever-changing. Again, سامر هيتضرب ضرب النهارده بعد المحاضره قالوا له انت ما قلتلناش كده دافعين تذكره على فيلم ميكي ماوس وجبت لنا سان جون اوف ذا كروس وكلام اني واي اوكي حتى يعني الراجل معلش نايجل كالدر از ا فيموس scientists in the United States, in his writing, science and physics in our world today, again, this is something because I think metaphysics is something very essential to the creation 
of space, in my point of view. This scientist, if you heard of him, they give what to El. The Gamma to the metaphysics, the metaphysics, the Alam and Lamar, the metaphysics, the Gamma, the Hena, the Lubnan, the Arab. لا غير متافيزيقا لا 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 هوت شيء اخر اما ما ورقيات اكزاكتلي ما ورقيات بيوند اوكي ان في النهايه بيقول ان حتى العالم الميستكس في العالم الاسلامي والمسيحي نقشوا البروبوزيشنز بتاعتنا دي اللي احنا وصلنا لها بالساينس بالحدث حدث بالسين مش بالثاء الحدث بتاع الميتافيزكس الحدث شكرا حدث ما 30 سنه في امريكا انت كويس بعرف اتكلم عربي الحمد لله <تصفيق> لا لا حدث الحمد لله ثانك يو فبيناقش في القصه دي في بروبوزيشن برضو في احد وهو حتى ناشي في الكتاب بتاع الصوره دي فبيقول الجماعه دول الجيومتري اللي وصلوا لها از بيست اون ذوس فيلوسوفيكال اند جيومتريك كونسبت ذات ار بيست ذا ابسولوت ابستراكشن ذات از ذا جينيوس ريلي ذا التيميت جينيوس اوف ذيس بارت او حقبه من تاريخ الحضارات المتراكمه في المنطقه بتاعتنا الوصول للمرحله التجريديه اللي هي في بعض الناس يؤخذ على الناس لا يا عم ده ما عملوا كده عشان ما بيعرفوش يرسموا الست العريانه فقال لك بلاش يا عم خلينا في الجيومتري طبعا اتس ا بوينت اوف فيو سامر ويز ذا نيد يو كان اور يو دونت وونت تو بينت هير اور يو اكشلي ثوت اوف اكسبلورينج برينسيبلز ان ذا يونيفيرس اتس ا ماتر اوف انتربريتيشن Okay, <coughs> quantum is the level of sub, 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 sub that has some of the principles of cosmology for the macro scale are very similar on the micro scale. And we know now through factual observation that the surface that you see in front of you, any surface, flat or not flat, is really like this. Turbulent. Turbulent. There is no such a thing as when you zoom, 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 there is no surface that is really quiet. There's nothing. This is literally every single surface, depending on the metal or the nature of the surface that actually you are exploring on the micro, micro, micro. And that's actually what, if you know uh, this guy, uh, when he explored the notion of the femto, femto second, you've heard of him, the whale, he was actually after arriving at the registration of those femto moments, that you can go to the subquanta. تحت خالص جوه هو هي يعني مش تحت يعني تحت مجازا جوه 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 طبعا لما بتنزل جوه 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 انت بترجع ايه بره 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 برضه ما انا انا دايما انت بتضحك فيا اما بتضحك عشان فاهم يا اما بتضحك عشان <تصفيق> ده كلام ميكي ماوس <تصفيق> لا لا اوكي الكوانتم ثيري Again, for the projective geometry, or topology, or Riemann geometry, all the kalam that you're working on, working on, or working on today, from the day you're not aware of it. That's the problem. That's the problem. That you're actually working on the tools of the universe, that if you started to explore the creation of space and forms through topological, multiple, multi-curved languages, and I'm going to go through this one really fast because this is. Taking too much time. This is all happening in the macro scale, and again, chaos theory, patterns of weather, period. There's, it exists on man, many manifestations. Okay, fractal geometry. That's another discovery of the 20th century, that really everything is in nature is expressed. Exp it does express itself in fractals. If you've heard that expression, I don't know if you can look. It's about the gamma of Lebanon, Arabic, fractals. Hmm? Fractal geometry, exactly. في بعض ال expressions كده لسه في العربي ما ما عربيتش بس أعتقد إنها كلها مفهومة. It's all again in the sub-quanta level. Fractal geometry manifests in many different ways that have different rules of geometry. Fractal, obviously, we can go and also explore it in the fourth dimension. This is atoms. This is an image actually from a lab, representing an a computer image of atoms being shot from a from a. An electron gun that is actually it never takes the same path twice again ever. The same electronic gun, the same gun takes so so in that in, in vacuum actually, and that's this is not an, a painting, but this is really a registration, a computer registration of that movement of electronics being shot by an electronic gun in a laboratory. Again, this is looking at it from 
the possible above or the other axes, if you will, because it's happening in space. <coughs> Patterns of smoke, all of these are fractals. Again, we go to life forms, and you have also a different kind of biggest. Again, there's something fundamental when you have the line that separates physics from biology. And this is, you have another, and we can't really go into that today because it's a huge discussion, is when, I'm just going to tell you one small thing. If you take a biological entity from this direction and move backward, you'll end up to the subatomic level that's made of carbon atoms. Ultimately, it has to, carbon atoms. But what does necessitate the notion of carbon atoms remaining in the world of the atom, the physical world of physics, from when it crosses to the world of biology, hence life force? This is really an area in science that very few scientists are exploring the point where biology and physics diverge. And what is that secret, between brackets, secrets of life, that actually allows for that to happen? <coughs> All of this introduction is really about science and philosophy and the world we live in, and hence you come to us as an expression, the art. Again, science, philosophy, and the arts. And at one specific moment, at the end of the 19th century, again, because all of these things are connected, the advances in science and the philosophers and the artists were all feeding off and on of each other. They, can, they were not living in separate worlds as we are today. All these fields intersected and fed off each other. Which is really, which are the rules of beauty? Where does it come from? That course is ahwa. Of course, it's ahwa, ahwa baladi. Fa'alan. Fa'alan. Yeah, the hawa mon ki tabas sali keda muamari ala ka ham el shogl el baladi da shogl ugly. Munk. Khodu keda and spin it in space and you get this image. Allah. So how do you actually begin to judge that object? Where is beauty here? The notion of beauty, the aesthetics. Is it this based on this or the same object that has points here and moves in space? and it begins to behave differently. Okay, again, this person, if we focus on him, he's actually a guy with some kind of a pajama or something, jumping in space, and this notion is the beginning, the beginning of the idea of cinema and movement in space. So, so you have point one, point two, point three, and it's, it's multiple gestures and so on, and you can fix each one of them and say, what is the most beautiful one? Okay, I'm the same object. Did I change by doing this? I am the same guy. Or doing this, or doing this, or doing this. I can dance here like, uh, like whatever, but I'm the same object. Which point in my movement in time and space is the more beautiful? Okay, okay, in motion. Okay, then we have a new conception or concept of beauty that is based on process in motion, time and space. So, but we know for sure that the object is still the same. It's just the behavioral gestural movements that can be affecting the way we perceive of that. That's obviously before even Lumiere brothers began to invent the cinema. This is before them by a few years. So. <clears throat> Enter Marcel Duchamp. This guy is a painter in Paris, and this is happening in his backyard, a few kilometers away somewhere in Paris, in Jules Marais. And Bainbridge, another guy doing the same experiment. And he said, wait a minute. That's what uh, uh, Samer was referring to in the introduction. He, I mean, he used the, the very famous painting of A Nude in Western painting. He said, I'm going to paint a nude descending a staircase. <clears throat> Obviously, that's him photographed in chronophotography. <clears throat> and he 
made that famous, very important painting at this point, which is the new descending a staircase. Okay, his point was, which, which, which one? He began to say, it's really the state of wine of the new that I'm more interested in than the fixed nude in time. The nude that's reclining and it was painted hundreds and thousands of times in Western civilization. He comes to the stroke, I think, of genius, says, I'm no longer interested. It's uh, I'm interested in her state of mind. Is she going down the stairs? Of course, he used something very banal. Nazla sil. Nazla tamili. Tabil asha'ha? Walla tamil ahwa wal madba. Akid il painting lazim idrayir. Law nazla tabil asha'ha? Hikaya. Tifta hil bab lil kumsari walla lil bustagi? Mawdua tani. Nazla bas kira shim mahawi fi ginina mawdua tali. And then he began to introduce this notion of the state of mind of the nude descending a staircase. And he was very, very deliberate in using something that is mysterious because you don't even know where she's going to. Instead of saying, nude sleeping with her lover. <laughs> she's sleeping with her lover. <laughs> there is a becoming, she's going. We need to understand her state of mind, her state of becoming, her state of being. That was a fundamental turning point in the history of Western art by this one stroke of understanding that notion coming from scientists. And again, it's a philosophical proposition, if you will. And obviously, he painted in that <coughs> regard many other paintings. And he said, I'm done. And he played chess for the rest of his life. <laughs> Seriously, he did. He said, this is it. I cannot do more anymore. That's it. I arrived at a notion that is fundamentally <coughs> critical. Parallel, someone else, Picasso, began to explore the same notion, but he took a different cubistic expression, that said the, 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 Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, and he, this is his first cubist painting. Again, do you notice that all of them use the nude. This is like almost like the quintessential subject of art in Western civilization, besides the other subject about the uh, painting of Christ on the crucifix. That's another very important point, which I'm going to refer to it also. And Picasso took the same notion, with the, except, <coughs> the exact same idea. Duchamp took it right. Picasso took it left. Hence, cubism is born. Marcel Duchamp did something totally different with it. But again, this was a notion that gave birth to so many other paintings, all of them emanating from that one scientific discovery that became later another discovery that is cinema. But they all bifurcated out. <laughs> Raman, those are just examples of Cubist paintings, different types. This is uh, not, this is Braque, a uh, friend of Picasso, which I think he, he was more interested in space and urban space than Picasso, <coughs> and so on. Then in Russia, there was other guys taking the same notions, but took a different interpretation of similar ideas, which are the suprematists, Malievich and, <coughs> and his pals, and then hence you have the suprematism, which is different kind of abstraction to the notion of the fourth dimension and the movement time and space and you begin to have those configuration in time and space if you have heard of suprematism and constructivism and so on which are all of them are born out the same time in time of intersection being alaqat falsafiya or afkar falsafiya syntagms they multiple awal or paradigms scientific paradigms that reflected on those modes of expression in so again this is just to give you a hint where we're at now, because architecture is uh, uh, architecture. Hey, architecture, the paradigms, scientific will expression of mankind of art that architecture is really schizophrenically في حالة انفصام شخصية بطريقة حميدة طبعا أنا بعتبر انفصام شخصية بتاع الاركيتكت دي حاجة ممتازة ما هيش مشكلة إنك بتتصارع داخليا بين هل إحنا نحيد لنحية الساينس والفيزيكس والإنجنييرينج ويطلع 
الاركتكشر تلاقيها تاخد ناحيه وبعدين ترجع تاني ترجع للفلسفيكال بروبوزيشنز اند ذا بيسز اوف اور كونسبتشوال ثينكينج از ابسولوتلي فلسفيكال ذات بيكمز ميبي تو ابستراكت اند ريموفد فروم اتس كونكشن تو سوسايتي ميبي اور ذا بيور اكسبريشنزم ذات از ماريد تو ذا نوشن اوف ذا ارت اند سو اون اند ذاتس هاو اند اجين ذا روشن جايز went to the point that they said, that's it, there is nothing more. <laughs> the red square. That's the ultimate in their point of view, obviously. And that notion by uh, <coughs> Kandinsky. Another guy did something totally different by the same notions. Dali. He went to the source of the ultimate discourse in Western civilization said, I'm going to paint a Christ that has never been painted before, Christ in the fourth dimension. I'm interested in the ascension of Christ, not Christ who is bleeding on the cross. I want to register the moment of his ascension. So, so he borrowed the notion, this is Christ by Dali. <coughs> Again, he always used his girlfriend as Mary Magdalene or, uh, or, or, uh, or Ma Mother of Christ, but there was always a, a blurred interpretation. And <coughs> he actually used the exact same hypercube that was the expression of the fourth dimensional people that came out of the, of the Romanian geometry that we refer to that you were laughing at saying all these shapes, we don't understand anything. He actually took that shape, the fourth dimension, the fourth cube, and he placed Christ. Because the fourth cube, meaning that that actual cube is moving in all directions simultaneously, hence the metaphysical ascension of the figure of Yeshua, the <coughs> Samawat al Aulia. So, so this is he's going into a painting, the, uh, the figure that in Western civilization, the painting of Christ is something that's reserved to the sanctity of the church, and he he actually played with it in a fundamentally different concept which is about the state of mind, if you will, of that notion of Christ at the moment of. But, but, look again. Look again. This is the only Christ in the history of Western civilization that is not facing straight. That's another dimension. This is another philosophical. In this painting, he's not only talking about ascension, the fourth dimension, he's also created a Christ, uh, pardon me, painted a Christ in the fourth dimension, in the hypercube, is not facing between brackets, according to him, the ultimate truth. He's not actually facing that moment. He's looking sideways. There has never been, before or after, as to the best of my knowledge, a Christ painted in such manner. That's an, a, a, this is an architectural project. This is proposing a new concept of a Christ painted and this is a philosophical notion. Why is he looking sideways? Again, keeping the sacredness of Christ preserved, is it exactly the same moment as the nude descending a staircase? The nude, is she going to face her lover or getting coffee? Is this a Christ who's doubting his father? Or he cannot face whatever in front of him of the, the, the humanity that he's facing? It's an open question. Nevertheless, if his face was facing us, that question is no longer there. That's a philosophical question. And he's facing the other way. That's what you need to look for in your architecture. Don't ask me how you make this connection. That is exactly, exactly the level of conceptual thinking that a painter or the notion of suspension, obviously in our time now we express it in different ways because now we know that we can be suspended, defy gravity for reality, for real, once we leave this world of ours. So we know it does exist. And then another artist who did something that is very architectural, very topological, did something totally different with those notions. M.C. Escher, hand that's drawing itself, that's drawing itself, which is the loop of infinity. Another experiment. And again, he played those tricks on us. You know, the water that's going up, 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 up. It didn't go anywhere. How come it's coming down? 
course you know MC Escher. You better know MC Escher. Okay. All right. So he did just a trick. He played with the notion of perspective. He connected two lines here. Does that one notion here makes all the difference? Then what's going up, it comes down, but nothing went up and nothing came down. How? This is not a painting to look at, to be, to look at and say beautiful or not. This is a painting to make you think. It, then, again, the notion of beauty, whether it's in motion or in this kind of illusion, it's a philosophical proposition about the notion of the loop of infinity. What goes up comes down, but nothing went up, really, in that particular painting. And he painted the famous ants on the Mobius strip. The ant is on the outside, it moves in, and I'll show you another drawing that's more clear, that the Mobius strip is this. You've heard of the Mobius? before, of course, um, and the, the fundamental properties of the Mobius and the Klein bottle, which came later, which is a, a, a three-dimensional or four-dimensional proposition of the same, that a surface, when it's twisted in space and connected to the two ends to the other way, <coughs> when you move on that surface, I'll show you on this drawing. Okay, this is the Klein bottle. If you go inside the bottle and you move, and you move and you keep moving inside, inside, you're on the inside of the same without crossing the surface, without intersecting with the surface. And, and that is a very important notion. That's a very important property that you went from the inside to the outside or from the outside to the inside without crossing the threshold, a boundary, a gate, a plane. The Mobius strip and the Klein bottle do the same thing. We must have heard a lot of architects playing with this notion in, in direct reference in architectural surfaces and we can squeeze them and we, we did this experiment in another project which you can take that clown bottle and literally twist it and twist it and twist it and twist it multiple times no matter what and it still retains the property of what's inside and what's inside, what's outside are completely blurred. There's no way you need to cross a surface to exit or to enter. That's a spatial concept that you need to think about. How come, what makes a pro, what, what gives اللي بيدي المعطيات لأي فراغ اللي هو يمسح فكرة ما بالداخل وما بالخارج ومش محتاج إني أخرج من الباب عشان ابقى خرجت بره، انا جيت اخرج لقيت نفسي دخلت تاني وانا في الكلاين باطل، فايه اللي بيحصل؟ طبعا الكلاين باطل دي از توبولوجيكال بروبوزيشن بار اكسلونس هي دي اللي يعني حتى الايكويشن بتاعتها ماثيماتيكلي ام فيري انترستد ان ذيس وان هاز بين وركت ويز اند اتس ا اتس ا اتس ا فيري كومبلكس ماثيماتيكال ايكويشن تو درا ان ايكويشن تو رايت ان ايكويشن فور ذا كلاين باطل ليت الون ذا موبيوس so this is the explanation. This is a, a, a window or a gateway or whatever is supposed to go from the, out, from the inside to the outside. And if you move around the, the Mobius strip, <coughs> that threshold, if you're on the Mobius strip, you're supposed to go from the outside to the inside, and it doesn't. It keeps you looping back without having to cross, expression, without crossing the edge of the paper. غير ما تعدي الثرشهولد أو العتب بتاع الفراغ بتاع هو برنارد كاش طبعا is another important uh, writer that you need to know about who wrote an entire book called Earth Moves around those notions with the topologies and topographies of uh, the terrains, the territories and it's called Earth Moves. It's a very important book. I also I was referred to, to it to uh, Samir because I think it's a very useful tool to understand <clears throat> and, and then begin to also play with the notions of memory and collective memory in terms of the a threshold is not only always a threshold of physical threshold but even the notion of memory so how could you cross a threshold in memory from the distant past and you cross to the future and you loop back through a Mobius strip concept and you have not crossed the present the present hub and so on <coughs> زي ما كنا منفعص في الكلاين باطل you can تاخد الموبيا ستريب دي ومنفعص فيها يعني this is a موبيا ستريب and it can be تقدر <coughs> you can manipulate it as many times as you want for a certain purpose obviously this is just a, a theoretical exercise here to, to demonstrate the notion that it, it, it can be also undulating and you can move on that surface 
and endless, but if you keep moving, moving, what appears to be here, if you keep moving and we continue the Mobius, what here will meet you on the other side of the same point of departure, which is, again, an interesting. <coughs> so, head on to architecture of the beginning of the century. We have the Russian guys experimenting with the exact same principle. We, that time in history was so rich with intersections between all of these propositions that coming from science and philosophy and, and art, and, and you have obviously the famous uh, constructivist uh, tower by uh, Tatlin in Moscow. <coughs> okay, and then I go, instead of the futuristic guys, I'm gonna go propose even something different for the traditional modes of vernacular architecture. That is okay. Uh, the great Hassan Fatih also, again, that Samir was referring to, was inspired by those forms. This is an image I took in Egypt from the Middle Egypt looking down at the Nile, and those are domes and vaults. It's a magnificent view. Okay, we, we, if you take this one and if you continue reproducing those forms today, insisting on the domes and the forms, and so on, لأن بنستخدم نفس التكنولوجي بتاعة 100 سنة أو 80 سنة فاتت لكن هو في الواقع one interpretation هو دي <coughs> was that same surface just taken is the continuity of the membrane of the earth بالمد هو فعلا كلها مد مد brick architecture بال بنسميها بال في مصر اللياسة ما أعرفش بتسمي ال expression هنا اللياسة بتلاقي سطلع ونزل وطلع ونزل وعلشان يعمل expression ده he only can build it in the way a technique the technique of a dome or a vault technically but today we can build it otherwise so we can do the same expression if you will special expression with this continuum which is a continuum membrane again a topological membrane by actually achieving the same spatial expression but without having to reproduce the essence of the spatial expression in this moment was is to produce this effect, spatial continuum, not necessarily is married to the notion of a dome in particular, or a vault, or a kubba. The meaning of the meaning is that the topology of the Sahara is compatible with the tectonics. I'm going to say that there are two main expressions, the planar geometry and the topological geometries. The Sahara, the Faraq Saharawi, the greatest, 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 مثلا في الحالة مثلا بستخدم القرية انها اكستريم، الصحراء بتقابل المدينة بشكل عنيف جدا، مفيش حتى فلتريشن، مفيش، السكة وانت ماشي في الصحراء بتروح مقابل كمية تكتونيك كونسنتريشن اوف فورمز سادنلي وبيحصل نوع من الكلاش لان مفيش ديفيشن، مفيش جراديوال ديفيشن في ان ذيس نيتشر اوف ذوس كايند اوف متروبوليس اوف ذيس بارت اوف ذا وورلد، فكل دول تكتونيكس اللي هو ذوس بلينز ار create tectonics planes, the exception to the rule. <coughs> this is the, in, in the, in the scientific explanation, this is the normal condition in the universe. This is when, the, when you just meet that one plane that you actually have created. So the tectonic and the topological two conditions, and you can, in the use of language, you'll see projects that are actually mixing the two Propositions sometimes just going all the way tectonics and planar, and sometimes going just topological without actually how Khalid bin Elitnin and so on. Right, ma. طبعاً دول ال vectors أو ال trace الخط اللي بيحصل حالي ال plane إن هي طبعاً it's a three-dimensional, four-dimensional expression. فا في بعض ال فا ده بيأخذنا بقى في نقطة تانية اللي هي اللي بدأت أتكلم عليها لما we talk about the new descending staircase. Where is the notion of beauty? Is it in the state of mind, in the behaviorism of the space, in the behaviorism, the tasarrufiya of the farag, the noah, the fikr, the state of mind, the state of becoming in that object is really the notion that, that in my opinion, challenges that the hadda fikrit, the one I call it, the one I call it, the one I call it, 
ثلاثة من عشرة يبقى باشمهندس عملت بيرفكت بروبورشن. This moment I think is over. Why? It's, it's, this notion is based on the fixed principles of beauties that are based on principles of preconceived notions of beauty. In the Western world, you have the golden means. Divide the square in half, take the diagonal, rotate it, it will give you one to one to the square root of two. You have the perfect golden means. And then if you do that one, that the mustatil that one, you go no wrong. Okay, that's in the world of statics. So what I'm saying, those are the traces of those topological and tectonic formations that we were experimenting also with another project that I'll show you in just a little bit. <coughs> so in this notion, which position in that particular spatial expression is privileged? Where do we stop? Where do we decide? Where does the architect, he or she says, stop here? Because w which one is more beautiful if we follow the notions of traditional notions of beauty? That's a question. Okay, that's, that's for sure, that's a point, that's a, it's a utilitarian moment in occasion that has to be ultimately met no matter what any project we meet. That's, that's not a, a question that we're throwing out the window. That could be, that could be a sofa, yeah, by the way, if you're talking about reclining sofa, it could be. It could be, it could be a curve. It could be, I mean, which one? Again, to answer your question, do I stop here because that particular curve, spatial curve, is the most comfortable ergonomically? Then you stop here. Or is that a spatial configuration? And I'll just continue so we can discuss this whole thesis and take it apart and throw it out the window as we wish. But I just need to continue the thought. OK. A what? No, 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 no. This is the, this is, this is the. Okay, the question I'm asking with this one, and those are other questions we'll have to engage, obviously, is that notion of, again, I wanna move <clears throat> to the next one. Again, the bubble, the blob. Okay, Samir, what are you laughing at, Samir? Okay. <laughs> All right. You have to always, in every lecture, there has to be a target of your, <laughs> someone you use as your punch bag. served that purpose. He was referring to, at one point, the blob that, that actually Greg Lynn was talking about. But that blob is, as I was referring to earlier, is separated from another continuum that just happened to be at this moment that actually separated itself that could be at this notion or could be in any moments, I mean, which blob is the, is the blob, or it can go back to the origin of its point of departure as part of the membrane. And all of these are intersecting with tectonics just because that exercise was exploring that, but we can also explore those topological notions without having to show, again, that's it. That's what I'm referring to. See, see this particular blob here that you refer to is really that notion that separate itself. Is it this notion, is this moment, or is it still being in the process of separating? Is it still connected to the umbilical uh, membrane or so on? Again, uh, this is pure, 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 pure tectonic. Again. Which one is it? Enter, enter, enter. What's my Ah. Roy, Roy. As Roy, I mean, I'm always concerned about the Which one is more beautiful, Roy? It, it, so, it's, so, so, so there's no choice, really. It depends what are the criteria at one particular moment that you need to apply. It could be the criteria of comfort, it could be the criteria of, 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 of. But none of them is privileged. That's what I mean.
whatever. It's just, uh, just a quick, just a simple animation, really. You do it in five minutes. Just, and, uh, and the notion here is, are we looking for the compression of space? Then we, we tend to go towards this. Are we looking for the release, the expansion of space? Then we would go, and so on. If we are in time and space in the future that we're looking into pulsation in space, i.e. the space literally really behaves like that one, then we may actually go for Roy, for all of them, possibly. Malaysia Roy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then you can manipulate this. This, this is actually a Klein bottle manipulated through the intersection in space. And it can go for in, in any kind of configuration. Again, that's a theoretical exercise to just demonstrate <coughs> the point. And it has vectors. You know, all these surfaces are created with specific vectors that around which those membranes move to create those configurations. So you can actually either create the vectors to, to allow the mo movement in space around them, or you can extrapolate them back. You can create them, and you can actually deduct them through deduction de to deduce, yeah. <clears throat> so that is just to say the introduction that there is this notion in this particular trajectory in this probably the, the past very small uh, moments in science and, and philosophy and the arts, but I, I just chose mahatat, stations that were so fundamental in the shift of our perception of everything that has to do with the creation of space. That's what I mean. Obviously, if we're talking about the research, this, I mean, we can create a book, the moments, the perception of humanity in the last hundred years into a new paradigm or paradigms, our new syntagms are so complex and so intersecting and so complex in the way they relate to each other that it's, 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 it's a huge project. But us, for the purpose of our uh, notion in architecture, how do we actually find our place in this moment in civilization affected and affecting? to occupy space, environmental spaces, whether the scale is, is actually an object, i.e. that, that is not, does not occupy space, but actually it's within the space, or it begins to enter into the notion of space, i.e. that you occupy it, and it goes all the way to the urban scale or the vast scale of, I mean, we're working now with a project that, if we have time, I can show you, that's 40 kilometers by 27 kilometers because it's a master plan of a vast uh, archaeological area. In, uh, in Egypt, the pyramids uh, plateau and the Memphis necropolis. So the scale, obviously, when you cross the scales from the macro, as I showed in the macro scale of the universe, or the micro, micro, micro scale of the subquantum, the principles may remain the uh, may remain the same, may, but they shift in emphases at one point. When you, when you shift the space. That happens also in architecture when you're working with urban scale or, or urban design, or urban planning, and you move to closer to the notion of urban design and the notion of architecture, i.e. one particular structure, until you enter through the space, until you actually, again, that's what uh, Earth the Moves was discussing, which is a very interesting book you really have to read, I, 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 I recommend it very well, is actually moving in the terrain on the exterior and moving into the space around a structure, into the structure, so it's one continuing train until you're discussing it becomes the teapot that you're holding. That continuum in the notion of territories or territorialization and so on. And I have no idea about the time. I have no idea where we are. I have no idea how much and who's, it, who's asleep and who's not <laughs> asleep. But that we haven't really uh, uh, shown any architecture yet to the disappointment of, of the young crowd here because obviously that's what they, they want to see, how this translates. 
بس وات از تايم يا ثمانية ف أفهم؟ yes okay uh, <coughs> so uh, so if uh, there's a couple of uh, of uh, of projects that I wanted to show how those theoretical أو ال 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 الفكر النظري الفلسفي ال 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 scientific ال the how the arts really the perception of the arts affected how they manifest in the way we attempt to create this architecture that is even in the in the process itself again is very important so um, I don't know if you're too tired or you can take a little bit more I can continue okay all right this is a project and, 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 and I chose those projects carefully because this is an academic institution so it's really the educational process more than the showing off of particular project that we, we do not like so this project the setting <coughs> setting يعني ال 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 الموقع بتاعه كان في كان في في دبي الخليج الخليج العربي فما يعني بالمفهوم التقليدي ما فيش موقع معنى ما فيش ارض المشروع كان بيدور على ارضه يعني الراجل الكلاينت اللي قالنا الكونجلامريت كده هي مجموعه كويتي اماراتي اشتروا مجموعة اوكيانا اللي هي استراليا من مجموعة العالم اللي هي كلها مش موجودة اصلا ده كل ده افتراض يعني هيخلقوا جزر علشان نخلق عليها اركتكشر فجزء من الاركتكشر is to create the morphology upon which architecture happens for which comes first فرخة ولا البيضة يعني او الموبيا ستريب بمعنى اصح يعني هنعمل الجزيرة وتطلع اركتكشر ولا اركتكشر تطلع الجزيرة ولا ولا ناخد مركب ونعوم ونطلع ونسيب الدنيا فاضية اوكي Business? Yeah. That? This was on the business. What? This, this kind of project. Uh, 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 architecture is all about business anyway. All, all architecture has to intersect with business. At the end, any commercial enterprise that engages the economy is business, period. No architecture does not intersect with business. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter extreme or not, but it is a proposition. Extreme fantasy world, but it is a proposition. Okay, so the uh, the notion of, uh, of of engaging this was actually working with a, a very big workshop with all the different kinds of engineers because you're creating objects in the water, so we have to simulate how space can be created in water. I.e., we're building islands. The islands deal with بنشة على أسس طبيعية حقيقية. الطبيعة هات تشيلها مهما بنيت جزر بالرمل لأنها كنت بتديني بالرمل بالرمال مش بالخرسانة بالرمال أو أتفا لازم نراعي فكان معنا ال ال water engineers and we working with the simulated uh, uh, programs and <coughs> when the program shows blue meaning the water is المية نظيفة fresh وبيحصل لها flushing تتغسل بتلف بتلف فا it's uh, clean لما تفضل حمرة معناها it's still not flushed يعني ما حصلهاش تدوير في كامل طبعا we're looking for the, the way that they are ultimately looking for the way that they should actually move <coughs> beyond so uh, in, in the smaller scale you do the same exercise you do certain configuration and I show you how we arrive at those configurations of those islands because we kept changing them but we proposed a configuration for the islands based on the conceptual thinking and then the water engineers would actually shift because showing here ultimately that this remains red after a number of days that's unacceptable then ha something has to happen to the configuration of the island and so on just this is just a way of explaining I have just one out of order here <laughs> and just to talk about the business, which I'm very glad that uh, our friend here brought it up, is that by, by doing this, is we decided, and I'll show you, I'm jumping back and forth, that those particular island, this is the, the, the black line, is the one that shows what's above the water, and the red line is the low tide and high tide, and then the bottom is what touches the bottom of the Khaliq al-Arabi. Muhit, yani, awal Khaliq. Uh, for every time you have to move 
an island for a purpose, spatial or the, the flow of water, literally massive amounts of intersecting sands change the economic equations. The volume the volume that sand has two islands that are intersecting, they share this particular volume, meaning they cancel each other out, so you're actually saving money. The more you move it out, they actually they clear, but then they start to intersect somewhere else and so on. So what you see from the outside is not really what you see because there's so many other layers that are simultaneously what we were doing is looking for the flow of water, the spatial configuration of the island that will take the architecture that will show you why they took certain shapes and the economic implications. Our island X number of dollars. And so anyway, for, for the, the simultaneous progress of this process was not absent from the economic calculations that had to move on. And then I'm jumping again in the process and they were in the configuration. We had the island that at the center had the center of activities and on the edges that the quietness and the spa, we can feel spa and that's at this point how the hudu and so on. For, for there is a parametric proposition was forces that th this is the boundaries that were given to us, which is an imaginary boundary, which is just water. It doesn't have actually physical boundary that we will turn it into physical boundary. And in the center, we gave it a force value that says at the very point here, it may, it, propo it, it, it pro proposes the potentialities of the ultimate activities. Activities meaning noise, or boats, or wait, wait, and so on. And on other dimensions, those are frames of m hundreds of frames that I'm just picking certain frames in this process that kept manipulating until we reached the point that <coughs> these axes would move around certain vectors to explain why. And, and from that long process, some potential locations for islands began to emerge. And those are working with the notion of the flow of water. So as I was showing you earlier, if this configuration did not work and we show, we work, we take this one to the model to the water engineer and the flow of water doesn't work, then we have to break this island here and so on. So it was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with the economic ramifications, the spatial, the configuration of the island and obviously the engineering of those islands. Again, those are choices, frames of part of that process, long process of how we, uh, we would reach this balance, ultimately, if you will. And, and the notion of, again, some islands emerging. Okay, that's, the, the, the process was so back and forth, back and forth, that it's really hard to explain it in linear terms, because I'm, I'm jumping like moments that happened after moments because they already went through the other process of the engineering. But at one point, this is just an example, I just chose it here to explain when you begin, there is that particular part of the project that has a diagram or a program, because we were generating the program as we were creating the spaces, that actually had to create the central notion of, this, of the space, which is the big landmark hotel and so on. There's a lot of cinemas and, and, and the program is, is multi-purpose. And the notion is we're creating culture for the place from the nature, which is the water. So there was chunks of water rising from the ocean, which manifests itself in the notion of the culture of the alam tahta al-bihar, the aquariums. membranes, our planes of landscape surfaces is emerging out of those islands. And again, it, and this is one possibility. Again, the new descending staircase possibility. You can stop here. And this particular moment here could be privileged because if the programmatic, no al bernamic, will volumes, will hezb al iqtisadiyya, will value engineering, and, the, and so on, everything goes into the making of architecture and the program. I.e., if we stop here, and again, I can, we can change the vectors and, and generate the, the, the trajectories differently that it could actually produce a particular project. Or this would be a 200-room hotel, for instance, maybe. And, and you can keep going. And the interest, for example, the case of the idea, for example, the idea of the Queen of Faragha and the volume that is talking about the water, the water under the water, with the volumes that are talking about the burg or the chunk of space that is doing the hotel, for example. Those are the landscape planes that are actually the, the membranes, our, our plates, the islands, to generate 
surfaces that are landscape planes, landscape in the true sense, or in, or blur, does not even decided yet. And you can go on and you can stop. And again, Rami, Lena, which one is more beautiful? At this point, it really was not looking for which one, of them, which one is more appropriate, or is it more beautiful? Again. Okay, until maybe you reach that particular nude, if I take the analogy back again. Maybe, maybe. Is she the type that we arrived at, that she's the type that wants to make love? Maybe, right? Or is she the coffee type? What do you think? Whatever. So it's really you decide, this, the, the gesture, the configuration, all these, all these values, none of them is privilege. It's really you place it and you place the program and you place the economics and you place the diagram and you place the volume and you place and you keep, you can change it and you can fill this with program. I mean, literally, I mean, we're doing this program. This is not haphazard because we're actually doing it and you know there is cinemas and, and volumes and shopping and da 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 and they, those are the, the aquariums that are going up and the hotel rooms and maybe there are suspended gardens and maybe this whole diagram will compress again for whatever purpose because if I show you the articulations or iterations or the possibilities it's, it goes at infinitum possibly but it's not really about that, it's about finding the right moment that keeps the balance for that particular project. Balance between the program, the economics, the space, the culture, da 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 da, until you reach, and the gestural motion, because all of this is facing back to Dubai. Again, there are visual studies that we're actually going through in parallel. That's what I'm showing you again for the benefit of architecture students in this room. None of this one is going in the computer alone. Exactly the opposite. All of these diagrams are generated by handmade sketches that are actually deciding those vectors because uh, you can't decide those vectors and you push the button and the computer does it for you. I'm, I'm showing you backward because the, the blue surfaces here, which are the chunks of water coming from underneath, which are these, intersect with those slabs. Slabs meaning those volumes that are going to be filled by the space of the, uh, of the uh, uh, hotel and so on. It's, this is really what ran the show, not the other way around. I'm actually showing you backward just to show the notion of that, that shifting in, in the diagram. But really, this is how decided this, how it goes. Because if we take this sketch, which is based on this plane and that plane facing Dubai this way and Dubai this way, and the centrality of that figure, which is intersecting it from within to create the water tanks, the aquarium, the aquarium, the aquarium, and it's rising here, and it's creating this, all of these unfolding in space. It's really you decided in handmade, the thought process, or the idea of it is generated here, and you test it in those multiple Iterations by the, the help. I mean, this chunk is that chunk, obviously, of, of the computer. It's not. And parallel to this one, multiple handmade draw, uh, pardon me, uh, maquettes, uh, models. Models going in parallel because the, those tectonics intersecting in, in space were also testing those particular planes and what kind of space that we're creating here by because all of this can remain the same but we can compress this one for whatever purpose of design and this is for instance the entire central area at one point this iteration uh, changed later <coughs> and and then we we take particular you know like those are mini studies mini model studies maquettes to really take a particular area which is here, how the shifting planes penetrate coming from this island and they enter into this particular configuration here, which if you go back to this one, I mean again, I'm, I'm trying to explain to you a non-linear process in a linear way may take you to this moment here, but it's expressed in drawing and in model, in computer model, in, in this sort of animate world of potentialities and, and some, some of them are done in, in three-dimensional <laughs> maquettes to explore those possibilities, it's hand in hand, parallel. Obviously, the iterations are are, uh, are uh, endless, and you can go on to other parts of the project. This project is, is so many elements, but I'm just showing hints of it. 
uh, how the planes of these islands were not really a flat island, how these trade islands were shifting in plane, in space, because the back was always where we received the boats. Everybody moved with boats, so no cars. Uh, and that th th there were villas, i.e. villas, like individual uh, uh, units. And, and they are suspended at this moment of the intersection between those two planes, and it's expressed. Again, that's the central space, the particular elements, and how, again, in the sectional studies, this could be the moment that stops, could have been, or, uh, or continued all the way up as we showed in, in one particular moment. And the equation was always determined at the end by also the economics and the number of, of uh, hotel rooms and so on that actually, this, those are actually very uh, rudimentary diagrammatic uh, art architectural sections and so-called sections just to study at those points the volumetric, I mean, those are not articulated in detailed architecture at this moment yet. The, the volumetric, those are the volumes of water moving through and so on. And some of those plates that configured the, uh, the hotel uh, arms, which became these later, and, and those are the water chunks coming from the side. And again, this diagram is still a diagram still. That's not architecture. It does not arrive to the maturity level of artistic architecture articulation because it's still searching in that moment because all of these m multiple layers that are, are shifting in space up and down to, to create those because those were actually uh, units, residential units uh, in, in other parts is, is keeps... And so you stop at this point, and we studied in semi, semi sense of the space with water and stuff to just to test it, and then we go back and take it from this level down again. Again, those are the chunks that penetrate through, and there was this big uh, uh, bar and, and so on at the top. So the diagram or the um, the program also shifts and changes by the necessities of those moments of the exploration of the process and the big lobby of the hotel and how everything is arrival, the arrival of this one, there's no cars arriving here. All the arrival comes through boats and the sometimes, most times they penetrate the spaces onto the inside and so forth. And this was the, uh, again, the chunks of the, um, the, uh, the spa hotel, which was at the very extremity of the project with the, the, uh, the quietness of the space on the outside that connected to it. Those are the so-called roof plans of that same image, this part here at this moment, and connected to it there are hotel rooms or actually we, the, the, the client likes to call them water homes that are actually connected to a spa, a very, very high-end spa, which again, the, you can see the, the hinges and the tectonic that actually came and shifted, rising from some of these islands to creating the spa and the hotel spa connected to those so-called water homes that are articulated in this. And they're actually literally upside down because they're facing the water, the water below them, so they are connected to this element. This is the one unit <coughs> of that particular manifestation. Again, I don't want to take too much time. Just passing through it quickly because Okay, uh, here's that, the sketch of that unit. Again, the planes of landscape, how they divide the spatial configuration of the architecture, <coughs> and so on. That's the same. That's the same three-dimensional uh, maquette sketch of that particular point. They're shifting the landscape. <coughs> Again, I, I'm emphasizing the notion, just for the purpose of the, the academic setting, that there is no such a thing as the computer does it all. There's no such a thing that the computer would do it. Even with this entire long uh, present uh, introduction, is the simultaneous traditional extension of the hand with the, the hand sketch and the, the three-dimensional maquette and the, and the computer modeling. It's one complete rotational loop. It's impossible to separate them from each other. <coughs> Again, this, the, the, the landscape would actually switch its location in, in space. <coughs> okay, right. So, so that's that was a, just a simple example of that one project. This 
project was going simultaneously, and it's the, the, the very different source of, of, uh, of the trajectories or the philosophical notion that actually generated the, the, the spatial configuration, which was the Grand Egyptian Museum in, um, in Cairo. Uh, it was an international competition. And again, in this one, the, the, the thought process was based on the, the configuration of how the ancient Egyptians, we were not about to mimic the forms that the ancient Egyptians created. It's, it's, it's as if the, the high priests or the architect that created those forms living and thinking by their own metaphysical and thought process based on the, the, the religion of ancient Egypt would have, because the high priest and the architect were one and the same, obviously, and, and the whole notion, obsession with the life and the afterlife was the fundamental, again, without going through the whole thing because it's a long story here, but this is the, the moment of creation in ancient Egypt. This is a, a drawing from the walls of ancient Egypt. This is not created today. This is just a, a drawing, a graphic of it. The, all, the great Atum God is creating the world, and there's something called here the Heper, which means to become, literally. Which is the same verb from which comes the cheper, i.e. to become. Cheper, cheperi, the first act of creation, the, the first great God says, meaning I became the becoming from the becoming, where my own becoming became the becoming of the becoming. This is the great God declaring the arrival of himself from his own creation and so on. It's a cycle. And the, the act of becoming. And that it's expressed by this uh, heper and then they at this line of threshold between the world of the gods and this of the world of i.e. creation of man and Isis is receiving the disk of the sun, the, the sense of creation from their perspective and this is the other world. So we took literally the, the notions of this, this, the religion, because this is the ultimate, this is the, the way they lived in, and in ancient Egypt, but really the afterlife, was the, the, the extreme sense and nut and how they, 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 they received the notion of cosmology by nut and jeb is the land, and between them something called space. They invented the notion of space is necessary to create shu to separate the cosmos from the land. Actually, the idea of space was, was part of them, so... All of these notions were the basis and how their, their notion of time was not linear. And we were discussing at that particular moment, in ancient Egypt, is it really the, the world of the gods and the world of man, the pharaohs and the man, the king and man on land, on, on, on land of Egypt, or and the, the divine realm? Does Egypt as a concept in their head existed here in the intersection ultimately between the realm of the God, because they really they did not believe in multiple gods, but it was the God and attributes, and, and on the land of the Pharaoh, the Pharaoh the king, and the man and humanity, the humans, the Egyptians, does it exist here, or is it something that really feeds of itself? It's impossible because this notion that you can separate them, as in separating king, uh, religion and state, as in the European notion. In the Egyptian, ancient Egyptian notion, they are inseparable. They one feeds into the other. So once we actually arrived at the understanding of this diagram, that this realm of man, realm of God, that actually one begets the other because Horus receives the disk of the sun from the God, and the God Pharaoh on land is actually an extension of the power of the God, so it's impossible, it's a loop like this one. So hence, that diagram which became an architectural diagram, there, this is the space where ancient Egypt reside, if, if you will. And that, that, is the no, that is the ultimate diagram at which the rest of, uh, of the architectural thinking really evolved to to begin to, because the museum was actually exploring the entire length of 3,500 years of Egyptian history, arts and sciences, and, and, and all of that. And how you express all of that one with this notion of the inseparability of man and God in every single detail in ancient Egypt. So in every single detail and behavior and membrane in this entire museum was predicated upon this notion that they are inseparable. And also they had this other notion, it's called the Ouroboros, which is a snake that eats its own tail to express the eternity of time, i.e., is it really eating its own tail or is it giving life itself through 
begetting its own self. So they express time in a very, very complex and very sophisticated way, the Ouroboros. So the Ouroboros and that loop of the inseparability, al-adam al-far'i bin al-alam al-insan, بالفرعون بالإنسان المصري القديم وعالم الإله يتقطع في لحظة معينة وتكمن هنا عبقرية مصر القديمة هي دي اللحظة اللي كانت the conceptual genesis of the project which expressed itself also multiplied by a notion of the Ouroboros اللي هي الفكرة الزمن والإترنيتي of time أصبح الجينيسيس بتاع فكرة المشروع اللي هي بدأت تاخد شكل معلش أنا هعدي في الحاجات دي كتير بسرعة <coughs> just I wash sketches again the sketches would begin in in the core of the intersection of this world resides the the infinite the number of 31 dynasties that constitute the dynasties of ancient Egypt which each one has a particular sarcophagus uh, uh, sarcophagus بالعربي التابوت تابوت اللي هو بيعبر عن فرعون معين بيعبر عن حقبه معينه طبعا احنا عندنا توابيت في القاهره وفي توابيت في باريس وفي توابيت في, في العالم كله فازاي تخلي الكونتينيوتي which is essential of all of ancient Egypt uninterrupted فالتوابيت اللي موجوده في اللوفر ولا في برلين ولا ولا had to be represented through the continuum of space التابوت الموجود هيكون موجود واللي مش موجود لازم يبقى يعبر عنه للكونتينيوتي اوف ذا سايكل at the very core of the center of the the spatial, again, uh, becoming, I'm um, jumping, uh, again, in multiple layers, just to just give you a notion of how this project went about. The layer that actually surrounded the, the space with the sarcophagi were actually were to be exist were the, the, the Book of the Dead, which actually had the annunciation of I am the becoming of my own becoming, which is the force of the making of the first creation in their conceptual mind. This is the ultimate high priest with actually those the at lawa bisamuha quwwat al utterance. Hatta di wajuda fil 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 masihiya lawa al logos al logos al kalima al kalima lawa ana akun ana I become a logos. Wajuda bas manifestation tanya fa hatta al logos bita the the point of I become I became the own becoming which is the game in kitab al mauta lawa bidayat al khalq and fi fikrathum hiya al muhita bi al continuum bita al tawajud. ال 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 طبعا again I'm jumping weeks and weeks and weeks here and just how those mem the membranes that actually intersect is literally took literally evolved from that diagram of two intersecting surfaces to this surface and again you will find that the the Ouroboros and the 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 hints at this point of eternity that begins to be the cousin of the Mobius strip. In لو فكرت في الموبي في الأوروبوراس conceptually it has notions related to the Mobius stress which is if you move on from one surface you arrive at the other while the Ouroboros is it creating the tail or eating the tail which is a different notion of time again sectional studies to really begin to really explore at, I mean we're really at an advanced point of of how these and the, the lobby of the of the Ben Qusayn the lobby in the Wusul the Matḥaf and all these different and at the end this is this is the notion of the space where everything intersects with that secret of that ancientness of Egypt does exist in that one but this one actually shifted as it moved in space based on the dynastic behavior because some dynasties for instance at one particular moment Akhenaten challenged this notion of the creation and said there is the god of Atun and then he created a different kind of intersection hence the the membrane behaved differently and this is when we actually started to explore it on the three-dimensional computer overlapping it but that's what I mean this if you move in time time of ancient Egypt this diagram right here would begin to shift up and down based on the the relationship with the other membrane that actually contains all of it if you will <coughs> So, uh, that just uh, takes you, uh, pardon me, I went too fast. Okay. Um, so, at certain sectional moments, where, where again, we go back to the point that uh, Samir was referring to earlier, the, the encapsulation of a particular moment that has a reference 
in like the 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 the, the um, holy of holies or a particular moment in a certain dynasties encapsulates itself and, and it expresses itself in that particular hermetically sealed complete universe blob our bubble manifest in every particular notion and so on see there were moments that have a particular encapsulation that expresses itself in in the form of the diagram that in in presentations explaining the holy of holies of that particular moment of the evolution of the Egyptian mind or the Egyptian bin Qusayn religion for those are just sections showing the how this big because the entire space became almost an Ouroboros in itself. The evolution of all of the 3,500 years in the macro scale also became a, a, an Ouroboros and a Mobius strip shifting around. But those are just diagrammatic intersections to, to explain how they behaved. <clears throat> this is just a moment. It, it, and this is actually the moment of Akhenaten in particular, uh, taken apart. That's in the larger setting, because the, actually the setting of the museum is actually not far from the uh, great from Giza. It's it's actually about uh, a kilometer and a half a distance. So in all the time when this membrane is shifting about to create the museum membrane, there was a virtual pyramid inversed as exactly the same size of the Great Pyramid, but it's in a virtual dimensions. Because the holy of holies of the Great Pyramid is actually inverted here, related theoretically to the same one in its real self on the other side, which is in the Great Pyramid in Giza. But that's, this one actually is the surface around which rotates this whole notion of the creation of the, of the museum, but it's not. And that's another conceptual representation, post-rationalization of how the different elements evolved. <clears throat> okay, I think I'll stop here and because this has too many projects. I think I'll stop at the, at the Egyptian Museum and uh, ESK House is another house also that would have been. But uh, maybe, maybe you should uh, see if there are any questions and take it from there. Sam. <laughs> Okay. Thank you.